You see, we, we yes, have sir. food on yes, our sir. table because God loves us. Yes. But those who don't have any food, you don't mean that God loves them any less. Yes, that's right. You know, we, we're healthy in our body, and some of us, and we, we feel strong. But those who are sick and in any, those who are struggling, uh, they don't mean that God loves them any less. That's right. And see, sometimes when we associate God's love with blessing, we make those who don't have it feel as though God don't love them. And that's not the situation. You see, we're both challenged. Both if you have food or you don't have food, if you have money or you're broke, if you have a home or you don't have a home, you're challenged to use whatever state you're in to glorify God. Amen. So if, if you if you, you don't have a home, you don't have no roof over your head, you're challenged to, to worship and glorify God in the beauty of holiness without a roof over your head. How, how, how do I live without the security of a home and still glorify God? That's your challenge. But if you have a home and you have a roof over your head, your challenge is how do I live with God and glorify God with a roof over my head? If I have, if you, if you have no money, your challenge is how do I glorify God and, and stay honest and holy and pure and don't have enough money to pay all my bills and make and make my ends meet? How do I be faithful and I still in lack of my financial uh, uh, necessities? But if you have enough money, then your challenge is, how do I use what God has blessed me with to glorify him and be out and bless other people? You see, what I'm trying to say to us, God loves all of us. And whatever state you're in, God loves you. And, and because you have or don't have, it's not a measure of God's love. It's a definition of your challenge. What you have or don't have creates the context in which you got to serve God. Yeah. So it's not a measure that God loves you more or God loves you less. That God's blessed somebody more and he's blessed you. You see, because with every blessing comes a curse. The curse is a challenge. If God gives you a car, you got to pay for it. If God, if, see, there's a challenge that comes with every blessing and with every and with every challenge comes a blessing. What you have to, what I'm saying is you got to take time to look and see what God is doing. Why is that important? Because when we're talking about living holy, holy is, is not what you do. Holiness is the, 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 the aura, the essence, the, the, the flavor, the, the aroma that flows from a life that's dedicated to God. That's, that's, what, that's what it's like. It's, it's, it's holy. When you live in the beauty of holiness, the beauty of holiness is like, it's like the grace that, that flows from an eagle in front. You, 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 don't, you don't necessarily see the grace. You don't know how to describe it, but it's an experience that you have when you watch the eagle. You see the grace and, and the majesty that comes, the majestic nature that comes from him. How? It's just the, 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 the quality of who he is and or, or what it is in flight. So when you live holy unto God, the beauty of your holiness is just that aroma of your life that comes out and, and influences the world around you. That's what we're looking for. And that comes when we're committed and dedicated to God. We said no reserve, no retreat, no regret. Fine. Now it's time to figure out why you have, why you have no reserve. What you're not going to retreat for. Who, who you're going to stay faithful to. And what you will never regret is serving out to God. That's living a holy, holy, holy life. All right. With that said, now it's time I guess for the sermon. Let's go to <laughs> let's go to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, chapter 34. Begin in verse 29 reads. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking. God. Aaron and all the people of, of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and he commanded them all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the people of Israel what he, had com what he was commanded, the people of Israel would see the face of Moses, 
that, that the skin of Moses' face was shining. And Moses would, would put the veil over his face again until he went in to speak with him. Praise God. Just for a little while. I want us, if you will, first consider the thought. Unveiled holiness. Unveiled holiness. Moses goes to talk to God and something happens. You see, it's hard to be holy if we don't spend time in God's presence. The Bible says that Moses went to, because he talked with God, the, the glory of God rested upon him. There was a physical manifestation of, of Moses having been in God's presence because Moses was, was there speaking with God. So to when, in, when you spend time with God, there's, there is a, a transformation that happens that can only take place in the presence of God. See, when you're trying, if I try to live holy, if I try to live right, try to do the right thing without spending time in God's presence, it's not going to last. Right. The wrong word spoken to me can set me off. The, the, the wrong incident on the highway can just give me a, a setback. I can, I, can, I can lapse in judgment if, if I just don't get enough sleep. If, if I don't spend time with God, then the, my very best efforts of trying to do the right thing and trying to be right and trying to live holy and trying to be, it's not going to work because I'm only get transformed in the presence of God. Spiritual transformation only happens at the feet of the master when he is speaking his word, his law to you, when he is explaining what his desires are and exposing his mind, his heart, and his desires for you to you. When that happens, then our lives get transformed and, and it's a transformation that everybody can see. You see, it, when Moses came down, it says that everybody saw his face. They were, they, 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 they noticed that he was shining and there was something different about that boy. There's some, something unique, something strange about Moses. He, he's shining and when we spend time with God, our lives should be a progressive change. We should always should be in an endless state of becoming. We should never be satisfied with the measure of holiness that we have. It should always be a thirst, a hunger to go deeper and get closer to God because that people need to be able to see it. Nobody noticed for a while that you're living for God. If nobody can tell that you're living for the Lord, if nobody knows that you're a Christian, if, you, if nobody can determine that there's a unique kindness about you, there's a, a unending love about you, there's a generosity that's unnatural about you, if they, if they can't see something about God on your life, you need to ask the question, am I spending enough time with God? It's not about what they can see or what, I mean, what they say or that they're not the problem. If folk can't see God on me, then the issue is I'm not spending enough time with the Lord. Yeah. In my life, my life ought to reflect the presence that I have with God. And, and, but, but, but the problem, the problem and the beauty thing of it is most of us are well aware of our glory. Most of us can, can explain our glory. We can say what we do and how often we do it. We can say what we don't do and when we stop doing it. We can tell people what we give and how much we go through it, what kind of pain we suffer, the sacrifices we make. Most of us know the glory and we rehearse the glory because it is our badge of honor. But when we look at Moses and people who really spend time with God, they walk out and they don't even know they're shining. They don't even know the full weight of God's glory on their lives. And they don't know that their presence is a blessing and a challenge to people. They don't know that when they're walking, the things they're saying are encouraging people, are strengthening people. See, if you have to feel in your life, if the wrong of your life is not making other folks' lives different. If you show up and everybody keep doing what they always did. If I enter the room and nobody changes their behavior, they're not the problem. The issue is what am I doing? Am I representing God enough that when I show up, when my life's fly, goes into the room with, with folk, Consider who I am and 
what I do in order to make a difference. Yes. It ought to make a difference in what they say and what they yes. do. It ought to make a difference. And we know that the church has lost some of that juice, some of that power. Yes. Folk used to hide the liquor bottles when they walked past the church. Yes. Folk used to wouldn't even smoke anywhere close around the church. Now folk get hot in the church, drink in the church, smoke in the church, do whatever they do out there, they'll do it here. Because the church has lost the glory of God's holiness. And when we live under the holiness of God, we become a mirror that the world has to see itself in. Yes. And when God uses us that way, the Bible says that when Moses came down, he didn't even know. He didn't know he had the glory. So much so that the people were afraid and they ran from him. They tried to get away from him. And Moses had to do what we ought to do. Moses had to extend himself to invite those back who had a problem with his holiness. They had an issue with his glory. They, 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 couldn't, they didn't know how to understand his glory. They, didn't, they couldn't explain his holiness. They, there was a problem with, with Moses. And, and the problem wasn't that they didn't understand Moses because Moses didn't change. Moses, they, they knew Moses. They knew he couldn't talk right. They knew Moses. They knew that he killed somebody in Egypt. They knew Moses. They knew where he came from. They knew his history. They knew he had a problem. They knew that there was a coup that tried to, to take his authority away. They knew Moses. So their problem wasn't with Moses. They didn't run from Moses. They hadn't run from Moses all the time they were in the wilderness. The problem was they couldn't understand or explain God's glory on Moses. How could Moses have that kind of glory? You see, when you start look, living, and I start living for God in God's glory, the robe of God's glory, we wear it like a cloak. When it starts flavoring our lives and, and influencing those around us, people will under, not understand why you're not upset. People won't understand how can you forgive those who hate hate, who've done so much wrong to you. People won't understand how you can be loving when people are, you know that people are out trying to get you. They won't understand how you can bless somebody and turn around and know you ain't got enough for yourself. They don't understand. Amen. They'll look at it and say, oh, there's something wrong with you. You're living in denial. You're not, you're not, not that's not real. Just watch them. They're going to fall. They can't keep that up. That ain't how God don't require all of that. You ain't got to live like that. You ain't got to be that kind. God know you ain't God want you to prosper and be a good help. Get all you can get while you can. That's what they'll say because they ain't going to understand the glory. And if we don't, if we don't hold on, we will stop believing them. But Moses understood. He says, no, y'all come back. Come talk to me. My glory is not for me. Come talk to me. The holy life that I live is not so I can negotiate a better deal with God. I don't live in the holiness to give me bargaining chips with God. I don't live with to do the right thing so God can bless me on the back end. I don't have my, my, my holiness. It's not a front-loaded investment. I don't do it so I can feel all right when I go out tonight and get drunk. I can think God protect me because I was in church. I don't live holy so that I can fix and get the road back right. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. That is why, that's why I do it. You see, Moses said, I do this because I got a message. And my message is, I got to tell you what God said. My message is, I, 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 I have what I have here. God put his glory on me, so you will listen to me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So where, where, where is the glory? See, we, 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 we use holiness, and, and, and we think holiness is doing the right thing. Okay. Uh -huh. Holiness is not doing the right thing. You can be very unholy and do what we call right. right. Yeah. Holiness is the nature that is submitted and surrendered to God, to the place that God allows, we allow God's self to flow through us, that others can experience God while we take a back seat. Yeah. Holiness is living for God in a way that we uplifts God in the midst of a situation while we say, you ain't have to look at me. Holiness says, God, you can do what you want with me, however you want, and I ain't going to worry. If I can, if I won't, because I trust you. Yeah. See, holy 
having is, is, a, is, 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 a, is, a, is, is an essence of being. It's, it's a spiritual characteristic. It's a, it's, it's a metaphysical reality that dwells within the human psyche that we can't define, see, or put the test to. Holiness is a connection, a linkage with God. Holiness is connection with God. Where God's person flows to us and through us. Holiness is, is not just going around and greeting people. We got social services. Holiness is not just going around and doing social justice. We got wow. groups to do that. Yeah, yeah. And thank God for it. You can be a part of those groups and you can do it. That's all great work. Yeah. But you don't have to be holy to do that. Okay. Yeah. Holiness. But here, newsflash. You ain't got to be holy to preach. Can't recognize my holiness. 
God didn't give me my shine to make your life feel bad. God did not to knock the dust off your life so you can go around making people feel bad because they're still struggling trying to get through. God didn't deliver you so you can give other people who are still struggling. We're not delivered to put people deeper in bondage. God has delivered us. He's not, he's not the dust off. He's, he's brought out to shine in your life because it's your shine that tell other folk that you have a right to be heard. Okay. Now please hear me. Come on, sir. We talk a lot about the right to speak. All right. Agencies about the right to speak. I find my voice yes. and I can speak. My, 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 my understanding, my humanity is about finding my voice and I ought to be able to speak. Yeah. You can speak. I should have a say so. That's what we find about. And that's what's good. But God raised the ante. God, God missed it. He, he, he raised right there. He raised the bar. God ain't calling us for a right to speak. Come on, sir. He said you need holiness for a right to be heard. All right, sir. You see, you can speak and ain't nobody got to listen. Don't nobody have to care about what you're saying. You, you can start talking over here. Have you ever talked to somebody about how hard you try, you just can't get them on script? You talk in it, and, and, and then they're talking about uh, the alphabet, and you over here talking about the best books to read. You, you, they, they just can't get to the right conversation. They just can't get to the right conversation. So, so after a while, what do you do? Either you just kind of forgive them in the conversation, or you go back and start talking about what they talk about. Because you can't get them to the right conversation. That's, that's what happens when you have the right to speak, but you don't have anybody who's extended you to you the right to be heard. Holiness, the shine of God on your life. Is what gives us the right to be heard. All right, sir. It says that I have been in the presence of God yes. and I am on assignment yes. from God. I didn't buff my own self out. God has buffed me out. God has walked the dust and dirt off my life. And God has commissioned me to come into your presence and speak to you. That's what we say with our life. But many of us are so worried and folk will think we're hypocritical. We're so afraid that folk will ask us questions that we can't answer, that we trip ourselves up and won't even go and say that God made me shy. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Holiness is not cowardly. Okay. I can't be a coward and be holy. Now, there's different, there's different ways we describe cowardly nature. Okay. We can say, I just don't want to throw my, cast my pearls before somebody, they ain't going to get it. Well, how do you know? You didn't tell them. Okay. You didn't tell them. Okay. You see, we have to be willing to risk okay. us. Yeah. If I'm going to live holy for God, I got to risk me. Yeah. You know why? Because God always assigned me to something bigger than me. All right, all right. Moses couldn't shine himself. Come on. Moses didn't even know he was shining. <laughs> Moses just had to deal with the shine when somebody else told him he had it. Okay. So what, you know what Moses didn't do? What I probably would have done? I probably would say, oh, I'm, yeah, I am shining, y'all, because, you see, I was up there with God. Y'all weren't up there. Y'all ain't shining because you wouldn't talk to God like I was talking to God. You see, I got this prayer like that. I fast it, and I shine, but you, you probably can shine too. Maybe, I don't know, but you might know the shine if you were praying fast more, but I, I pray, I fast it, so I'm shining. Look at me. You know I'm with God, right? You look at this shine. See, that's probably what I would have done. And I probably would have lost my shine. You see, because when you really shine and you don't, you don't even know when people show you shine, you don't, you don't make them feel bad, you invite them to come to us. Okay. Don't feel bad, come on. Look, God got something he want to say to you. No, 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 I know I'm shining, but come on. Let me talk to you and let me show what God got to say to you. Because see, when you're really shining for God, when, when this thing is going right and you're doing it and God is lifting you up, you don't use your shine to make folk down feel bad or push 
pushing people down. Don't use your holiness. Don't use your, your spiritual maturity to make other people feel like they're insignificant. Think, think, just think, think. Think, think. They're down on the same road with you. That's your brother. That's your sister. They're trying to get close to God. Don't use your spiritual shine to make them feel bad. Now, don't, don't, don't dull it yourself either. Okay. <laughs> you ain't got no dirt on your shine. Okay. No, you don't. You see, Moses, Moses, look, look, Moses, Moses didn't go dirt on the shine. You know what Moses did? Moses made a sacrifice to other folk in here. Okay. What Moses did was, Moses took a veil and put it over his face. But why why did you do that, Moses? Because you remember what happened later on in the story when, when, they, when Moses put the serpent on the, on, on the pole and raised it? Yeah. It wasn't long before they started worshiping the serpent. Okay. You know, when, when, when Aaron made that, that, that cat, you know? It, was, it wasn't long before they started worshiping the cat. Moses said, no, look, y'all don't worship me. I'm going to put a veil over my face so y'all can't see me so you can focus on the one that really matters. You don't have to look at my face. You don't have to see my shine. Just know that God is there. But you know what Moses did not do? Moses didn't turn the dimmer switch on his shine. He just kept it for the benefit. He was still shining under the veil. He didn't lose his shine. He just controlled it so other folk could be blessed. Surrender to God so other people can be blessed because you are shining. You know you're shining under your veil. You know what you could have done. You know what you could say. You know what you do to keep your spiritual life together. You know how much you pay. You ain't got to tell me. You know how many people you bless. You ain't got to tell other folk. You know if you die or not. What you have to do? What do you do? You live holy. And when your holiness threatens other people, challenge other people, you put on the veil. Okay. You don't deny your shine. You just control it so they can see God. Yes. You know what that, that you say, what that looks like? Let me tell you what that looks like. That looks like you're in a barbershop. shop. Okay. You're in a good bar, you're on the street and you and you talk to the folk and, and they they start talking and and they start cussing. They say you stuff it. You say, could y'all just hold that till I need please? You know, no, no, that ain't kind of like you. You know what you're doing? You know, just, you say whatever you need to say, but it's just fine shit. Then you get into this conversation with this one person, and they're really serious about you and the Lord. They're they really hearing about God. You see, and, and what happens is, in their conversation, they get so they get so worked up that a flower and colorful word fly out of their mouth every now and then. Okay. See, a put the veil on your face says, you let that word go okay. so you can continue to pray to the Jesus. Yeah. See, there's a difference, there's a time. You can you can close down the barbershop where everybody's just being disrespectful to God. But if somebody's in a dialogue where they're really trying to see Jesus and they come out their face in a way that is not right, don't they don't dis distract them by trying to make correct their language. Get them to God. Let them see the Lord. That's what it looks like to put a veil over your face. So you're holy. You know you're holy. You know you ain't gonna talk like that. You know you know you know if they come to church, you're gonna help them get it straight. But don't mess up. Tell them who Jesus is. We, you don't have to flaunt your holiness. Everybody know you go to church. <laughs> Just tell them. <laughs> Serve the Lord. I'm not offended because you cuss in front of me. Okay. I'm offended because God created you. You ain't got no sense of Okay. You cuss in front of the one who loves you so much that he gave you the words to cuss. Alright. <laughs> That's what Moses did. Moses, he, he, he put a veil over it, but he never stopped shining. He never did. But I thought it interesting, and, and, and I think I'm getting close. I, I, thought, I thought it interesting is this. Moses took the veil off when he went to see God. And when he got the message from God, he left the veil off until after he had communicated that message to the people. And once he communicated the message to the people, then he put the veil back on. Okay. You see, Moses let his glory shine. He let his holiness out of the veil 
when he was in God's presence or doing God's will. Okay. But when it came time when folk, Moses was doing Moses, he put his veil back on. Okay. That says to me, Clifford Wright Senior, when you're on assignment, when you're hearing God, you let the glory show. Let it fall through. But when you're out and you're living, then you act like you got sins that other people matter. You fail that thing. So we, you, my brother, my sister, you are only, if this text is to be believed, that I think it is, you are only truly seen. The true you is really only seen in God's presence or doing God's will. If you're not doing God's will, and you're not abiding and dwelling in God's presence, then the real you is probably not being seen. Because even you're showing people a dull you that has no shine and they're not concerned about being with you. Or your veil that they don't know the full depth of your relationship with God. But when you're serving the Lord, that's when you can show them who you really are. That's when people so unveiled holiness, living with Jesus in the beauty of holiness, is when you really become who you are. That's when you discover your true humanity. Yes. People say, you say, I just want to do me. What is that if you're not serving God? Oh, what you are you serving outside of serving God? Glory. What is the goal of the you that you are serving? If the goal is not to glorify God. Mm. What are you making money for if it's not to glorify God? Yeah. What are you going to work? Why are you trying to raise good kids if it's not to glorify God? Why do you do what you do? Why are you worried about what you eat? Why are you worried about your health? Why are you worried about COVID? If it's not to glorify God. If you don't want to live to glorify God, then ask, ask the question, what you living for? Living to make money. Living to have happiness. Living to have joy. All of that is wrapped up in God. You don't know what true happiness, joy, or peace is without God. You don't know what true peace is. You don't know what peace is until you have peace in storm. Yeah. And you don't have peace in storm without God. Yeah. You don't know what strength is until you have a strength in moments of weakness. Yeah. You don't know what true love is until you can love somebody who's already trying to hurt you because God has given you a power. You don't know what love is until you know you were dead wrong and somebody came up and forgave you and put their arm around you and loved you back into the fellowship. That happens in God. My brothers, my sisters. We say bye-bye to 2020. We happy to see 2020 go. But time is like COVID. It don't know no calendar. It don't know no boundaries. Tomorrow don't know no different than yesterday. The only way 2021 is going to be different if we are different and the favor of God through our lives make it different. If we don't change the, 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 the universe that we live in, we don't change and therefore influence the circle around us, it will be the same. If it's not COVID, it will be something else. This world is evil and it's dying. Life is with Christ. Yes. And if we don't find life in Him, we don't serve Him. If we don't walk in His holiness, we will reap the benefit of a dying world. We will walk. We fight over who will be president. We, 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 we're worried. We're calling people and we're sending money trying to influence who gonna win the rape the Senate races in Georgia. We're wondering what is Mick gonna do about the two thousand dollars versus the six hundred dollars. We're worried about all of these folk and what they're doing. But we fail to stop and recognize the only true and living God. We fail to realize that he's still king of kings and lord of lords. We fail to recognize
Every four years you get to vote for a president. Every two years you get to vote for a senator and senators and all that. You get to vote for you get to vote for everything from dog catcher president. You get to, you get to say what you want to happen. There's referendums on on the ballot. You get to say this is what I want to spend money for, and this is what I don't want to spend money for. This is what I agree with, this is what I don't agree with. And we 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 pick it and walk it and, and call people trying to, to solicit them. But with God, we get to go every day. Every day. Today I want you more than my life. Today, God, I want you king of my soul. Today, God, I vote you my way, my truth, my Fully and 
holy unto God. Yeah. He sent his son Jesus to this earth to be born of a virgin, to live a sinless life, to be crucified, to bleed and to die, but not stay dead, to rise with all power in his hands. And Christ did that. Yeah. He is yet alive. He is yet ruling. He is yet reigning. He is yet abiding. So if you haven't done that, now is your time, now is your opportunity to ask that you would stand. If you're watching this broadcast, if you're watching this service, and you want to make that commitment, you want to give your life to Christ, admit that you have done things that were against and outside the will of God. Confess your sins to Him. Commit to living and giving yourself completely to Him. Understanding that He did die for your sins. And that He did rise with power, all power in His hands. If you want to make Jesus the Lord and leader of your life, type in the comments, I want to be saved. Now perhaps you're in another category, you're saved where you stand, but You've been wandering in a wilderness, unattached. Well, today is a good day to join this vine, this branch in Zion. To be a member, not just a member, but a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. To come alongside and, 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 and join and move forward in building and advancing God's kingdom. So if you don't have a church home, I invite you now. If you would like to join Hope Church, just raise your hand. We'll welcome you where you stand. Because we practice safety here at Hope Church. We love God and we love one another. And we will welcome you with that same love as we journey towards our destination, as we journey towards our God. If you're online and you're watching and you want to become a part of this, this ministry, just type in, I want to be a member, and someone will reach out to you and we'll, we'll connect with you. Such a powerful word this morning. Excuse me, excuse me. A powerful word, a motivating word. Something that sets the tone for where we're headed. And so I'm going to invite everybody where Wherever you are, when we can't hold hands and we can't come up to the altar. But to join our hearts and our minds collectively as we pray into this new year. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we're here today only because of your grace and your mercy. Yes, sir. God, we are thankful that you saw fit for us to rise this day. That you saw fit, Father, to order our footsteps to this place where we would gather to worship you, God. To celebrate you, God. To get instruction, Father, for the next step, for the next course that you have plotted, that you already know, God. You are everywhere all the time. And so, God, we can rest in a, in, the, in the assurance that you are always there. That, God, you have not left us nor forsaken us. Despite all the challenges that we face in this year, Father, you are still faithful. You are still good. Father, you're still holy. You are still righteous. You're still reigning and ruling. And so, God, we stand in the confidence and assurance of your holiness, of your love, of your grace, and of your mercy. We thank you, Father, for our pastor and our first lady. God, we thank you that you kept them, that you continue to bless them, that you continue to give vision, that you continue to speak through them. We pray, Father, that they would have continued strength and continued encouragement as we move forward by your divine permission and on your authority, God. We pray, Father, that we would receive the word of God, 
that we wouldn't just be hearers of the word, but we would be doers of the word. Yes. Father, that we would take inventory of our own lives, yes. that we would examine our hearts, God, and if you aren't there, then we would kick anything and everything out. Yes. That, God, we would invite you back into the place that you already were supposed to occupy. Yes. That we would give you liberty in our life. That, God, you would do with us what you would have us to do. That we would allow you to shape us and to mold us. Yes. That we would surrender and submit ourselves to you, God, every day. Yes. That we would give you the opportunity and the privilege, God, to lead us, to guide us, to rule over us, to reign in us, God. Yes. So that your glory can be seen, Father. Not ours, but your glory, God. Yes. So we pray tonight, God, that you would just be glorified in this moment. That you would be exalted, God. We lift up, God, those that aren't here tonight, Father. We pray continually for those that are sick and infirmed among us. Yes. We know, God, you're a healer. We pray, Father, that if it be you will, you would do so. Yes. But, God, regardless of whatever, we know you're still Lord. Yes. God, our circumstances and our situations do not change, alter who you are. Hallelujah. And so, God, we stand, Father, together, united in faith, trusting in you, God, yes. because you alone are worthy. You alone, God, deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Yes. And so, God, we, we, we will continue to trust you. We pray, Father, that you would just uh, bless families, bless homes, bless yes. marriages, God. Yes. Continue to keep our children as, as, as they continue to be educated. Father, whatever the, uh, the school system says, however we have to learn how these kids need to be educated. Father, I pray a divine hand of protection be upon them, Father. Yes. For those that have to go in person, God. We pray that you would keep them safe, God. Yes. And for those that stay at home, we pray that you would keep them safe too, God. Yes. Yes. We pray that you would allow things to happen the way they need to, God. That you would provide. That we would seek ye first, the kingdom of God. Yes. And your righteousness. Yes. And God, we know everything else will be added according to your will and your purpose. Yes. So Father, we just thank you again for your, for, your, for your grace and your mercy, God. Thank you for your goodness towards us, God. We pray that we would live and, and breathe and abide in the beauty of your holiness. Yes. That, God, that would be our mission, that would be our mandate, that would be our mindset. Yes, that we walk out of this place tonight, God, renewed and refreshed. Yes. That we are restored and that we are motivated, God, to do your will. Yes. God, because you deserve the glory. The world needs you, Father. And we are the agents that you've given permission to go out and show the world. Yes. So, Father, let us not be afraid. Let us not stand in fear, but let us stand in faith. Yes. Let us speak, Father, the words that you've given us. Let us do what you've called us to do when you tell us to do it, God. Yes. Let us not hesitate. Let us not cower. But let us walk and stand boldly in your grace and in your mercy. In your strength, God. Yes. Because we know that we can do nothing of our own. Yes. We can't do it without you, God. So every day, Father, we cast our vote for you, God. Yes. We cast the vote to submit to you, Father. We cast the vote that you would be the leader of our life. We cast the vote, Father, that we would represent you in the world. But, Father, on all chance that we fail and fall, we pray that you would forgive us. Yes. That you would wash us clean in your precious son, Jesus' blood. Yes, that you would renew our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. God, we're sorry for those things that we did, Lord, knowingly, that was not representative of you. Yes. And so we pray, Father, that you would help us. That you would strengthen us in those areas where we find ourselves weak. That you, God, would get the glory. Yes. Anyhow. Yes. Because the Bible says all things work together. For the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Yes. So, God, we just love you today. We love you because... You are the only one that we should love, Father, that, we, that deserves the love, I should say, God. You are the one that is deserving of all our love, Father, because you first loved us. So we thank you for that love that you poured out on us. We thank you for the love that was shared tonight, God. And we pray, Father, that as, again, as we move forward, that we would just continue to glorify you. We thank you, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy. All the glory, all the honor, all the praise unto your holy and your righteous name. Yes. In the name of Jesus, who is truly and certainly the Christ, we pray. 
And we said amen. 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 Hallelujah. Happy New Year.